Jewish culture is the culture of the Jewish people from the formation of the Jewish nation in biblical times through life in the diaspora and the modern state of Israel. Judaism guides its adherents in both practice and belief, so that it has been called not only a religion, but an orthopraxy. Not all individuals or all cultural phenomena can be classified as either secular or religious. A distinction native to Enlightenment thinking, Jewish culture in its etymological meaning retains linkage to the Jewish people's land of origin, the people named for the Kingdom of Judah, study of Jewish texts, practice of community charity, and Jewish history. The term Secular Jewish culture, therefore, refers to many aspects, including religion and worldview, literature, media, and cinema, art and architecture, cuisine and traditional dress, attitudes to gender, marriage, and family, social customs and lifestyles, music and dance. Secular Judaism is a distinct phenomenon related to Jewish secularization, a historical process of divesting all of these elements of culture from their religious beliefs and practices. Secular Judaism, derived from the philosophy of Moses Mendelssohn, arose out of the Haskalah, or Jewish Enlightenment, which was itself driven by the values of the Enlightenment. In recent years, the academic field of study has encompassed Jewish studies, history, literature, sociology, and linguistics. Historian David Bialy has traced the roots of Jewish secularism back to the pre-modern era. He, and other scholars highlight the Dutch philosopher Baruch Spinoza, who was dubbed the renegade Jew who gave us modernity, by scholar and novelist Rebecca Neuberger Goldstein in an intellectual biography of him. Today, the subject of Jewish secularization is taught, and researched, at many North American and Israeli universities, including Harvard, Tel Aviv University, UCLA, Temple University and City University of New York which have significant Jewish alumni. Additionally, many schools include the academic study of Judaism and Jewish culture in their curricula. Throughout history, in eras and places as diverse as the ancient Hellenic world, in Europe before and after the Age of Enlightenment, in Al-Andalus, North Africa and the Middle East, in India and China, and in the contemporary United States and Israel, Jewish communities have seen the development of cultural phenomena that are characteristically Jewish without being at all specifically religious. Some factors in this come from within Judaism, others from the interaction of Jews with host populations in the diaspora, and others from the inner social and cultural dynamics of the community, as opposed to religion itself. This phenomenon has led to considerably different variations of Jewish culture unique to their own communities. History There has not been a political unity of Jewish society since the United Monarchy. Since then Israelite populations were always geographically dispersed see Jewish diaspora, so that by the 19th century the Ashkenazi Jews were mainly in Eastern and Central Europe, the Sephardi Jews were largely spread among various communities in the Mediterranean region, Mizrahi Jews were primarily spread throughout Western Asia, and other populations of Jews were in Central Asia, Ethiopia, the Caucasus, and India, see Jewish ethnic divisions. Although there was a high degree of communication and traffic between these communities—many Sephardic exiles blended into the Ashkenazi communities in Central Europe following the Spanish Inquisition, many Ashkenazi migrated to the Ottoman Empire, giving rise to the characteristic Syrian Jewish family name, Ashkenazi. Iraqi Jewish traders formed a distinct Jewish community in India. Many of these populations were cut off to some degree from the surrounding cultures by ghettoization, by Muslim laws of Dhimma, and traditional discouragement of contact with polytheistic populations. Medieval Jewish communities in Eastern Europe continued to display distinct cultural traits over the centuries. Despite the universalist leanings of the Enlightenment and its echo within Judaism in the Haskalah movement, many Yiddish-speaking Jews in Eastern Europe continued to see themselves as forming a distinct national group, Am Yehudi, from the Biblical Hebrew. But, adapting this idea to Enlightenment values, they assimilated the concept as that of an ethnic group whose identity did not depend on religion, which under Enlightenment thinking fell under a separate category. Constantine Makwika writes of a differentiated but not isolated Jewish spirit, permeating the culture of Yiddish-speaking Jews. This was only intensified as the rise of Romanticism amplified the sense of national identity across Europe generally. 
Thus, for example, members of the General Jewish Labor Bund in the late 19th and early 20th centuries were generally non-religious, and one of the historical leaders of the Bund was the child of converts to Christianity, though not a practicing or believing Christian himself. The Haskalah combined with the Jewish emancipation movement underway in Central and Western Europe to create an opportunity for Jews to enter secular society. At the same time, pogroms in Eastern Europe provoked a surge of migration, in large part to the United States, where some two million Jewish immigrants resettled between 1880 and 1920. By 1931, shortly before the Holocaust, 92% of the world's Jewish population was Ashkenazi in origin. Secularism originated in Europe as series of movements that militated for a new, heretofore unheard of concept called, "...secular Judaism." For these reasons, much of what is thought of by English speakers and, to a lesser extent, by non-English speaking Europeans as secular Jewish culture, is, in essence, the Jewish cultural movement that evolved in Central and Eastern Europe, and subsequently brought to North America by immigrants. During the 1940s, the Holocaust uprooted and destroyed most of the Jewish communities living in much of Europe. This, in combination with the creation of the State of Israel and the consequent Jewish exodus from Arab lands, resulted in a further geographic shift. Defining secular culture among those who practice traditional Judaism is difficult, because the entire culture is, by definition, entwined with religious traditions. The idea of separate ethnic and religious identity is foreign to the Hebrew tradition of an Am Yisrael. This is particularly true for Orthodox Judaism. Gary Tobin, head of the Institute for Jewish and Community Research, said of traditional Jewish culture, The dichotomy between religion and culture doesn't really exist. Every religious attribute is filled with culture, every cultural act filled with religiosity. Synagogues themselves are great centers of Jewish culture. After all, what is life really about? Food, relationships, enrichment, so is Jewish life. So many of our traditions inherently contain aspects of culture. Look at the Passover Seder. It's essentially great theater. Jewish education and religiosity bereft of culture is not as interesting. Yaakov Malkin, professor of aesthetics and rhetoric at Tel Aviv University and the founder and academic director of Mitar College for Judaism as Culture in Jerusalem, writes, Today very many secular Jews take part in Jewish cultural activities, such as celebrating Jewish holidays as historical and nature festivals, imbued with new content and form, or marking life cycle events such as birth, bar, bat mitzvah, marriage, and mourning in a secular fashion. They come together to study topics pertaining to Jewish culture and its relation to other cultures, in Havero, cultural associations, and secular synagogues, and they participate in public and political action coordinated by secular Jewish movements, such as the former movement to free Soviet Jews, and movements to combat pogroms, discrimination, and religious coercion. Jewish secular humanistic education inculcates universal moral values through classic Jewish and world literature and through organizations for social change that aspire to ideals of justice and charity. In North America, the secular and cultural Jewish movements are divided into three umbrella organizations, the Society for Humanistic Judaism the Congress of Secular Jewish Organizations and Workmen's Circle. Philosophy Jewish philosophy includes all philosophy carried out by Jews, or in relation to the religion of Judaism. The Jewish philosophy is extended over several main eras in Jewish history, including the ancient and biblical era, medieval era and modern era The ancient Jewish philosophy is expressed in the Bible. According to Prof. Israel Ephros the principles of the Jewish philosophy start in the Bible, where the foundations of the Jewish monotheistic beliefs can be found, such as the belief in one God, the separation of God and the world and nature as opposed to pantheism and the creation of the world. Other biblical writings that associated with philosophy are Psalms that contains invitations to admire the wisdom of God through his works. From this, some scholars suggest, Judaism harbors a philosophical undercurrent and Ecclesiastes that is often considered to be the only genuine philosophical work in the Hebrew Bible. Its author seeks to understand the place of human beings in the world and life's meaning. Other writings related to philosophy can be found in the deuterocanonical books such as Sirach and Book of Wisdom. During the Hellenistic era, Hellenistic Judaism aspired to combine Jewish religious tradition with elements of Greek culture and philosophy. 
The philosopher Philo used philosophical allegory to attempt to fuse and harmonize Greek philosophy with Jewish philosophy. His work attempts to combine Plato and Moses into one philosophical system. He developed an allegoric approach of interpreting Holy Scriptures the Bible, in contrast to old-fashioned literally interpretation approaches. His allegorical exegesis was important for several Christian church fathers and some scholars hold that his concept of the Logos as God's creative principle influenced early Christology. Other scholars, however, deny direct influence but say both Philo and early Christianity borrow from a common source. Between the ancient era and the Middle Ages most of the Jewish philosophy concentrated around the rabbinic literature that is expressed in the Talmud and Midrash. In the 9th century Sadia Gaon wrote the text Amunoth ve Dioth which is the first systematic presentation and philosophic foundation of the dogmas of Judaism. The Golden Age of Jewish culture in Spain included many influential Jewish philosophers such as Moses ibn Ezra, Abraham ibn Ezra, Solomon ibn Gabriel, Yehuda Halevi, Isaac Abravanel, Namanides, Joseph Albo, Abraham ibn Dodd, Nisim of Girona, Baya ibn Pakuda, Abraham bar Hiyya, Joseph ibn Zadok, Hasdai Kreskas and Isaac ben Moses Arama. The most notable is Maimonides who is considered, beside the Jewish world, as a prominent philosopher and polymath in the Islamic and Western worlds. Outside of Spain, other philosophers are Natanel al-Fayami, Elia del Medigo, Jediah ben Abraham Badursi and Gersonides. Philosophy by Jews in modern era was expressed by philosophers, mainly in Europe, such as Baruch Spinoza founder of Spinozism, whose work included modern rationalism and biblical criticism and laying the groundwork for the 18th century Enlightenment. His work has earned him recognition as one of Western philosophy's most important thinkers. Others are Isaac Orobio de Castro, Tzvi Ashkenazi, David Nieto, Isaac Cardozo, Jacob Abandana, Uriel da Costa, Francisco Sanchez, and Moses Almosnino. A new era began in the 18th century with the thought of Moses Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn has been described as the third Moses, with whom begins a new era in Judaism. Just as new eras began with Moses the prophet and with Moses Maimonides, Mendelssohn was a German Jewish philosopher to whose ideas the Renaissance of European Jews, Haskala, the Jewish Enlightenment, is indebted. He has been referred to as the father of Reform Judaism, though Reform spokesmen have been resistant to claim him as their spiritual father. Mendelssohn came to be regarded as a leading cultural figure of his time by both Germans and Jews. The Jewish Enlightenment philosophy included Menachem Mendel Lefin, Solomon Maimon and Isaac Satanow. The next 19th century comprised both secular and religious philosophy and included philosophers such as Elijah Benamazek, Hermann Cohen, Moses Hess, Samson Raphael Hirsch, Samuel Hirsch, Nachman Krochmal, Samuel David Lozato, Nachman of Breslov founder of Breslov and Karl Marx founder of Marxist worldview. The 20th century included the notable philosophers Jacques Derrida, Karl Popper, Emmanuel Levinas, Claude Levi Strauss, Hilary Putnam, Alfred Tarski, Ludwig Wittgenstein, A. J. Ayer, Walter Benjamin, Raymond Aron, Theodor W. Adorno, Isaiah Berlin, and Henri Bergson. <laughs> <laughs> Education and politics A range of moral and political views is evident early in the history of Judaism, that serves to partially explain the diversity that is apparent among secular Jews who are often influenced by moral beliefs that can be found in Jewish scripture, and traditions. In recent centuries, secular Jews in Europe and the Americas have tended towards the liberal political left, and played key roles in the birth of the 19th century's labor movement and socialism. While diaspora Jews have also been represented in the conservative side of the political spectrum, even politically conservative Jews have tended to support pluralism more consistently than many other elements of the political right. Some scholars attribute this to the fact that Jews are not expected to proselytize, derived from halakha. This lack of a universalizing religion is combined with the fact that most Jews live as minorities in diaspora countries, and that no central Jewish religious authority has existed since 363 CE. Economic activity In the Middle Ages, European laws prevented Jews from owning land and gave them powerful incentive to go into other professions that the indigenous Europeans were not willing to follow. During the medieval period, there was a very strong social stigma against lending money and charging interest among the Christian majority. 
In most of Europe until the late 18th century, and in some places to an even later date, Jews were prohibited by Roman Catholic governments and others from owning land. On the other hand, the church because of a number of Bible verses, e.g., Leviticus chapter 25 verse 36, forbidding usury, declared that charging any interest was against the divine law, and this prevented any mercantile use of capital by pious Christians. As the canon law did not apply to Jews, they were not liable to the ecclesiastical punishments which were placed upon usurers by the popes. Christian rulers gradually saw the advantage of having a class of men like the Jews who could supply capital for their use without being liable to excommunication, and so the money trade of Western Europe by this means fell into the hands of the Jews. However, in almost every instance where large amounts were acquired by Jews through banking transactions the property thus acquired fell either during their life or upon their death into the hands of the king. This happened to Aaron of Lincoln in England, Esmel de Ablitas in Navarre, Heliot de Vessel in Provence, Benveniste de Porta in Aragon, etc. It was often for this reason that kings supported the Jews, and even objected to them becoming Christians because in that case they could not be forced to give up money won by usury. Thus, both in England and in France the kings demanded to be compensated for every Jew converted. This type of royal trickery was one factor in creating the stereotypical Jewish role of banker and or merchant. As a modern system of capital began to develop, loans became necessary for commerce and industry. Jews were able to gain a foothold in the new field of finance by providing these services. As non Catholics, they were not bound by the ecclesiastical prohibition against usury. And in terms of Judaism itself, Hillel had long ago reinterpreted the Torah's ban on charging interest, allowing interest when it's needed to make a living. Topic: <laughs> Science and Technology. The strong Jewish tradition of religious scholarship often left Jews well prepared for secular scholarship. In some times and places, this was countered by banning Jews from studying at universities, or admitted them only in limited numbers see Jewish quota. Over the centuries, Jews have been poorly represented among land-holding classes, but far better represented in academia, professions, finance, commerce and many scientific fields. The strong representation of Jews in science and academia is evidenced by the fact that 193 persons known to be Jews or of Jewish ancestry have been awarded the Nobel Prize, accounting for 22% of all individual recipients worldwide between 1901 and 2014. Of whom, 26% in physics, 22% in chemistry and 27% in physiology or medicine. In the fields of mathematics and computer science, 31% of Turing Award recipients and 27% of Fields Medal in Mathematics were or are Jewish. The early Jewish activity in science can be found in the Hebrew Bible where some of the books contain descriptions of the physical world. Biblical cosmology provides sporadic glimpses that may be stitched together to form a biblical impression of the physical universe. There have been comparisons between the Bible, with passages such as from the Genesis creation narrative, and the astronomy of classical antiquity more generally. The Old Testament also contains various cleansing rituals. One suggested ritual, for example, deals with the proper procedure for cleansing a leper Leviticus chapter 14 verses 1 to 32. It is a fairly elaborate process, which is to be performed after a leper was already healed of leprosy Leviticus chapter 14 verse 3, involving extensive cleansing and personal hygiene, but also includes sacrificing a bird and lambs with the addition of using their blood to symbolize that the afflicted has been cleansed. The Torah proscribes intercropping Lev, 1919, doi 22-9, a practice often associated with sustainable agriculture and organic farming in modern agricultural science. The Mosaic Code has provisions concerning the conservation of natural resources, such as trees Deuteronomy chapter 20 verses 19 to 20 and birds Deuteronomy chapter 22 verses 6 to 7. During medieval era astronomy was a primary field among Jewish scholars and was widely studied and practiced. Prominent astronomers included Abraham Zacuto who published in 1478 his Hebrew book Ha Hibor Ha Gadol where he wrote about the solar system, charting the positions of the sun, moon and five planets. His work served Portugal's exploring journeys and was used by Vasco da Gama and also by Christopher Columbus. The lunar crater Zagat is named after Zacuto's name. 
The mathematician and astronomer Abraham Bar Hiyya Ha Nasi authored the first European book to include the full solution to the quadratic equation x2 ax plus b. Topic zero and influenced the work of Leonardo Fibonacci. Bar Hiyya proved by geometro mechanical method of indivisibles the following equation for any circle s. LXR, 2, where S is the surface area, L is the circumference length and R is radius. Garcia de Orta, Portuguese Renaissance Jewish physician, was a pioneer of tropical medicine. He published his work Colloquios dos Simples e Drogas da India in 1563, which deals with a series of substances, many of them unknown or the subject of confusion and misinformation in Europe at this period. He was the first European to describe Asiatic tropical diseases, notably cholera. He performed an autopsy on a cholera victim, the first recorded autopsy in India. Bonnet de Latte is known chiefly as the inventor of an astronomical ring dial by means of which solar and stellar altitudes can be measured and the time determined with great precision by night as well as by day. Other related personalities are Abraham ibn Ezra, who's the moon crater of Benazra named after, David Gans, Judah ibn Verga, Mashallah ibn Athari and astronomer, the crater Masala on the moon is named after him. Albert Einstein was a German-born theoretical physicist and is considered as one of the most prominent scientists in history, often regarded as the father of modern physics. His revolutionary work on the relativity theory transformed theoretical physics and astronomy during the 20th century. When first published, relativity superseded a 200-year-old theory of mechanics created primarily by Isaac Newton. In the field of physics, relativity improved the science of elementary particles and their fundamental interactions, along with ushering in the nuclear age. With relativity, cosmology and astrophysics predicted extraordinary astronomical phenomena such as neutron stars, black holes, and gravitational waves. Einstein formulated the well-known mass-energy equivalence, E equals mc2, and explained the photoelectric effect. His work also affected and influenced a large variety of fields of physics including the Big Bang theory Einstein's general relativity influenced Georges Lemaitre, quantum mechanics and nuclear energy. The Manhattan Project was a research and development project that produced the first atomic bombs during World War II and many Jewish scientists had a significant role in the project. The theoretical physicist Robert Oppenheimer, often considered as the father of the atomic bomb, was chosen to direct the Manhattan Project at Los Alamos National Laboratory in 1942. The physicist Leo Schillard, that conceived the nuclear chain reaction, Edward Teller the father of the hydrogen bomb, and Stanislaw Ulam, Eugene Wigner contributed to theory of atomic nucleus and elementary particle, Hans Bethe whose work included stellar nucleosynthesis and was head of the theoretical division at the secret Los Alamos laboratory, Richard Feynman, Niels Bohr, Victor Weisskopf and Joseph Rotblat. The mathematician and physicist Alexander Friedman pioneered the theory that universe was expanding governed by a set of equations he developed now known as the Friedman equations. Arno Allen Penzias, the physicist and radio astronomer co-discoverer of the cosmic microwave background radiation, which helped establish the Big Bang theory, the scientists Robert Herman and Ralph Alpher had also worked on that field. In quantum mechanics Jewish role was significant as well and many of most influential figures and pioneers of the theory were Jewish, Niels Bohr and his work on the atom structure, Max Born Schrödinger equation, Wolfgang Pauli, Richard Feynman quantum chromodynamics, Fritz London work on London dispersion force and London equations, Walter Heitler and Julian Schwinger work on quantum electrodynamics, Asher Perez a pioneer in quantum information, David Bohm quantum potential. Sigmund Freud, known as the father of psychoanalysis, is one of the most influential scientists of the 20th century. In creating psychoanalysis, a clinical method for treating psychopathology through dialogue between a patient and a psychoanalyst, Freud developed therapeutic techniques such as the use of free association and discovered transference, establishing its central role in the analytic process. Freud's redefinition of sexuality to include its infantile forms led him to formulate the Oedipus complex as the central tenet of psychoanalytical theory. 
His analysis of dreams as wish fulfillments provided him with models for the clinical analysis of symptom formation and the mechanisms of repression as well as for elaboration of his theory of the unconscious as an agency disruptive of conscious states of mind. Freud postulated the existence of libido, an energy with which mental processes and structures are invested and which generates erotic attachments, and a death drive, the source of repetition, hate, aggression and neurotic guilt. John von Neumann, a mathematician and physicist, made major contributions to a number of fields, including foundations of mathematics, functional analysis, ergodic theory, geometry, topology, numerical analysis, quantum mechanics, hydrodynamics and game theory. In made also a major work with computing and the development of the computer, he suggested and described a computer architecture called von Neumann architecture and worked on linear programming, self-replicating machines, stochastic computing, and statistics. Emmy Noether was an influential mathematician known for her groundbreaking contributions to abstract algebra and theoretical physics. Described by many prominent scientists as the most important woman in the history of mathematics, she revolutionized the theories of rings, fields, and algebras. In physics, Noether's theorem explains the fundamental connection between symmetry and conservation laws. More remarkable contributors include Heinrich Hertz and Steven Weinberg in electromagnetism, Carl Sagan, his contributions were central to the discovery of the high surface temperatures of Venus and known for his contributions to the scientific research of extraterrestrial life, Edward Witten M -theory, Vitaly Ginzburg and Lev Landau Ginzburg-Landau theory, Yakur Aharonov Aharonov-Bohm effect, Boris Podolsky and Nathan Rosen EPR paradox, Moshe Carmeli gauge theory. Rudolf Lipschitz, Lipschitz continuity, Paul Cohen, continuum hypothesis, axiom of choice, Laurent Schwartz, theory of distribution, Grigory Margulis, Lee group, Richard M. Karp, theory of computation, Adi Shamir, RSA, cryptography, Judea Pearl, artificial intelligence, Bayesian network, Max Neumann, Colossus computer, Carl Gustav Jacob Jacobi, Jacobi elliptic functions, Jacobian matrix and determinant, Jacobi symbol. Sidney Altman, molecular biology, RNA, Melvin Calvin, Calvin cycle, Otto Wallach, allocyclic compound, Paul Berg, biochemistry of nucleic acids, Ada Yonath, crystallography, structure of the ribosome, Dan Schechtman, quasi crystal, Julius Axelrod and Bernard Katz, neurotransmitter, Eli Mechnikoff, discovery of macrophage, Selman Waxman, discovery of streptomycin, Rosalind Franklin, DNA, Carl Gerasi, the pill, Stephen J. Gould, evolutionary biology. Baruch Samuel Blumberg, hepatitis B virus, Jonas Salk and Albert Sabin, developers of the polio vaccines, Paul Ehrlich, discovery of the blood-brain barrier in fields such as psychology and neurology, Otto Rank, Viktor Frankl, Stanley Milgram and Solomon Ash, linguistics, Noam Chomsky, Franz Boas, Roman Jakobson, Edward Sapper, Joseph Greenberg, and sociology, Karl Marx, Theodor Adorno, Nathan Glazer, Irving Goffman, Georg Simmel. Besides scientific discoveries and researches, Jews have created significant and influential innovations in a large variety of fields such as the listed samples Siegfried Marcus Automobile Pioneer, inventor of the first car, Emil Berliner developer of the disc record phonograph, Mikhail Gurevich co-inventor of the MiG aircraft, Theodore Maimon inventor of the laser, Robert Adler inventor of the wireless remote control for televisions, Edwin H. Land, inventor of Land Camera, Bob Kahn inventor of TCP and IP, Bram Cohen creator of BitTorrent, Sergey Brin and Larry Page creators of Google, Laszlo Biro, Ballpoint Pen, Simha Blast Drip Irrigation, Lee Felsenstein, designer of Osborne One, Zeev Sarosky and Andy Gutman's co-creators of PHP and founders of Zen Technologies, Ralph H. Baer, the father of video games. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Literature and poetry. In some places where there have been relatively high concentrations of Jews, distinct secular Jewish subcultures have arisen. For example, ethnic Jews formed an enormous proportion of the literary and artistic life of Vienna, Austria at the end of the 19th century, or of New York City 50 years later and Los Angeles in the mid-late 20th century. Many of these creative Jews were not particularly religious people. In general, Jewish artistic culture in various periods reflected the culture in which they lived. Literary and theatrical expressions of secular Jewish culture may be in specifically Jewish languages such as Hebrew, Yiddish or Ladino, or it may be in the language of the surrounding cultures, such as English or German. 
Secular literature and theatre in Yiddish largely began in the 19th century and was in decline by the middle of the 20th century. The revival of Hebrew beyond its use in the liturgy is largely an early 20th century phenomenon, and is closely associated with Zionism. Apart from the use of Hebrew in Israel, whether a Jewish community will speak a Jewish or non-Jewish language as its main vehicle of discourse is generally dependent on how isolated or assimilated that community is. For example, the Jews in the shtetls of Poland and the Lower East Side of New York during the early 20th century spoke Yiddish at most times, while assimilated Jews in 19th and early 20th century Germany spoke German, and American-born Jews in the United States speak English. Jewish authors have both created a unique Jewish literature and contributed to the national literature of many of the countries in which they live. Though not strictly secular, the Yiddish works of authors like Sholem Aleichem whose collected works amounted to 28 volumes and Isaac Bashevis Singer winner of the 1978 Nobel Prize, form their own canon, focusing on the Jewish experience in both Eastern Europe, and in America. In the United States, Jewish writers like Philip Roth, Saul Bellow, and many others are considered among the greatest American authors, and incorporate a distinctly secular Jewish view into many of their works. The poetry of Allen Ginsberg often touches on Jewish themes notably the early autobiographical works such as Howell and Kaddish. Other famous Jewish authors that made contributions to world literature include Heinrich Heine, German poet, Mordecai Richler, Canadian author, Isaac Babel, Russian author, Franz Kafka, of Prague, and Harry Malish, whose novel The Discovery of Heaven was revealed by a 2007 poll as the best Dutch book ever. In modern Judaism, an Oxford guide, Yaakov Malkin, professor of aesthetics and rhetoric at Tel Aviv University and the founder and academic director of Mitar College for Judaism as Culture in Jerusalem, writes, Secular Jewish culture embraces literary works that have stood the test of time as sources of aesthetic pleasure and ideas shared by Jews and non-Jews, works that live on beyond the immediate socio-cultural context within which they were created. They include the writings of such Jewish authors as Sholem Aleichem, Itzik Manger, Isaac Bashevis Singer, Philip Roth, Saul Bellow, S.Y. Agnon, Isaac Babel, Martin Buber, Isaiah Berlin, Chaim Naaman Bialik, Yehuda Amachai, Amos Oz, A.B. Yehoshua, and David Grossman. It boasts masterpieces that have had a considerable influence on all of Western culture. Jewish culture included works such as those of Heinrich Heine, Gustav Mahler, Leonard Bernstein, Mark Chagall, Jacob Epstein, Ben Shahn, Amadeo Modigliani, Franz Kafka, Max Reinhardt, Goldman, Ernst Lubitsch, and Woody Allen. Other notable contributors are Isaac Asimov, author of the Foundation series, and others such as I, Robot, Nightfall, and the Gods Themselves, Joseph Heller, Catch 22, R.L. Stein, Goosebumps series, J. D. Salinger, The Catcher in the Rye, Michael Chabon, The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay, The Yiddish Policeman's Union, Marcel Proust, In Search of Lost Time, Arthur Miller, Death of a Salesman and the Crucible, Will Eisner, A Contract with God, Shel Silverstein, The Giving Tree, Arthur Kosler, Darkness at Noon, The Thirteenth Tribe, Saul Bellow, Herzog, The Historical Novel Series, The Accursed Kings by Maurice Druon, is an inspiration for George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and fire novels, another aspect of Jewish literature is the ethical, called Musar literature. Among recipient of Nobel Prize in Literature, 13% were or are Jewish. Hebrew poetry is expressed by various of poets in different eras of Jewish history. Biblical poetry is related to the poetry in biblical times as it expressed in the Hebrew Bible and Jewish sacred texts. In medieval times the Jewish poetry was mainly expressed by Piyutim and several poets such as Yehuda Halevi, Samuel ibn Nagrilla, Solomon ibn Gabriel, Moses ibn Ezra, Abraham ibn Ezra and Dunash ben Labrat. Modern Hebrew poetry is mostly related to the era of and after the revival of the Hebrew language, pioneered by Moshe Chaim Lozato in the Haskalah era and succeeded by poets such as Chaim Naaman Bialik, Nathan Alterman and Shal Chernikovsky. Topic. Theater Topic. Yiddish theater The Ukrainian Jew Abraham Goldfaden founded the first professional Yiddish-language theater troupe in Iasi, Romania in 1876. The next year, his troupe achieved enormous success in Bucharest. Within a decade, Goldfaden and others brought Yiddish theater to Ukraine, Russia, Poland, Germany, New York City, and other cities with significant Ashkenazic populations. 
Between 1890 and 1940, over a dozen Yiddish theater groups existed in New York City alone, in the Yiddish Theater District, performing original plays, musicals, and Yiddish translations of theatrical works and opera. Perhaps the most famous of Yiddish language plays is the Dybbuk by S. Ansky. Yiddish theater in New York in the early 20th century rivaled English language theater in quantity and often surpassed it in quality. A 1925 New York Times article remarks, "...Yiddish theater, is now a stable American institution and no longer dependent on immigration from Eastern Europe. People who can neither speak nor write Yiddish attend Yiddish stage performances and pay Broadway prices on Second Avenue." This article also mentions other aspects of a New York Jewish cultural life, "...in full flower." At that time, among them the fact that the extensive New York Yiddish language press of the time included seven daily newspapers. In fact, however, the next generation of American Jews spoke mainly English to the exclusion of Yiddish. They brought the artistic energy of Yiddish theater into the American theatrical mainstream, but usually in a less specifically Jewish form. Yiddish theater, most notably Moscow State Jewish Theater directed by Solomon McCoyles, also played a prominent role in the arts scene of the Soviet Union until Stalin's 1948 reversal in government policy toward the Jews. See Rootless Cosmopolitan, Night of the Murdered Poets. Montreal's Dora Wasserman Yiddish Theater continues to thrive after 50 years of performance. Topic: <laughs> European theater. From their emancipation to World War II, Jews were very active and sometimes even dominant in certain forms of European theater, and after the Holocaust many Jews continued to that cultural form. For example, in pre-Nazi Germany, where Nietzsche asked, What good actor of today is not Jewish? Acting, directing and writing positions were often filled by Jews. Both MacDonald and Jewish Tribal Review would generally be counted as anti-Semitic sources, but reasonably careful in their factual claims. In Imperial Berlin, Jewish artists could be found in the forefront of the performing arts, from high drama to more popular forms like cabaret and review, and eventually film. Jewish audiences patronized innovative theatre, regardless of whether they approved of what they saw. The British historian Paul Johnson, commenting on Jewish contributions to European culture at the Fan de Siecle, writes that The area where Jewish influence was strongest was the theatre, especially in Berlin. Playwrights like Karl Sternheim, Arthur Schnitzler, Ernst Toller, Erwin Piscator, Walter Hassenklever, Ferenc Molnar and Karl Zuckmeier, and influential producers like Max Reinhardt, appeared at times to dominate the stage, which tended to be modishly left-wing, pro-Republican, experimental and sexually daring. But it was certainly not revolutionary, and it was cosmopolitan rather than Jewish. Jews also made similar, if not as massive, contributions to theatre and drama in Austria, Britain, France, and Russia in the national languages of those countries. Jews in Vienna, Paris and German cities found cabaret both a popular and effective means of expression, as German cabaret in the Weimar Republic was mostly a Jewish art form. The involvement of Jews in Central European theatre was halted during the rise of the Nazis and the purging of Jews from cultural posts, though many emigrated to Western Europe or the United States and continued working there. <laughs> English language theatre In the early 20th century the traditions of New York's vibrant Yiddish theatre district both rivaled and fed into Broadway. In the English-speaking theatre Jewish émigrés brought novel theatrical ideas from Europe, such as the theatrical realist movement and the philosophy of Konstantin Stanislavski, whose teachings would influence many Jewish-American acting teachers such as the Yiddish theatre-trained acting theorist Stella Adler. Jewish immigrants were instrumental in the creation and development of the genre of musical theater and earlier forms of theatrical entertainment in America, and would innovate the new, distinctly American, art form, the Broadway musical. Brandeis University professor Stephen J. Whitfield has commented that, More so than behind the screen, the talent behind the stage was for over half a century virtually the monopoly of one ethnic group. That is, a feature which locates Broadway at the center of Jewish culture." New York University professor Lawrence Maslon says that, "...there would be no American musical without Jews. Their influence is corollary to the influence of black musicians on jazz, there were as many Jews involved in the form." 
Other writers, such as Jerome Karin, have noted that musical theater and other forms of American entertainment are uniquely indebted to the contributions of Jewish Americans, since, "...there might not have been a modern Broadway without the Asiatic horde of comedians, gossip columnists, songwriters, and singers that grew out of the ghetto, whether it was on the Lower East Side, Harlem a Jewish ghetto before it was a black one, Newark, or Washington, D.C." Likewise, in the analysis of Aaron Kula, director of the Klezmer Company, the Jewish experience has always been best expressed by music, and Broadway has always been an integral part of the Jewish American experience. The difference is that one can expand the definition of Jewish Broadway to include an interdisciplinary roadway with a wide range of artistic activities packed onto one avenue theater, opera, symphony, ballet, publishing companies, choirs, synagogues and more. This vibrant landscape reflects the life, times and creative output of the Jewish American artist. In the 19th and early 20th centuries the European operetta, a precursor the musical, often featured the work of Jewish composers such as Paul Abraham, Leo Asher, Edmund Eisler, Leo Fall, Bruno Granikstetten, Jacques Offenbach, Emmerich Kalman, Sigmund Romberg, Oscar Strauss and Rudolf Frimmel, the latter four eventually moved to the United States and produced their works on the New York stage. One of the librettists for Bizet's Carmen not an operetta proper but rather a work of the earlier opera comique form was the Jewish Ludovic Halevi, niece of composer Fromental Halevi Bizet himself was not Jewish but he married the elder Halevi's daughter. Many have suspected that he was the descendant of Jewish converts to Christianity, and others have noticed Jewish-sounding intervals in his music. The Viennese librettist Victor Leon summarized the connection of Jewish composers and writers with the form of operetta. The audience for operetta wants to laugh beneath tears. And that is exactly what Jews have been doing for the last 2,000 years since the destruction of Jerusalem. Another factor in the evolution of musical theater was vaudeville, and during the early 20th century the form was explored and expanded by Jewish comedians and actors such as Jack Benny, Fanny Bryce, Eddie Cantor, the Marx Brothers, Anna Held, Al Jolson, Molly Picone, Sophie Tucker, and Ed Wynn. During the period when Broadway was monopolized by reviews and similar entertainments, Jewish producer Florence Ziegfeld dominated the theatrical scene with his follies. By 1910 Jews the vast majority of them immigrants from Eastern Europe already composed a quarter of the population of New York City, and almost immediately Jewish artists and intellectuals began to show their influence on the cultural life of that city, and through time, the country as a whole. Likewise, while the modern musical can best be described as a fusion of operetta, earlier American entertainment and African-American culture and music, as well as Jewish culture and music, the actual authors of the first book musicals were the Jewish Jerome Kern, Oscar Hammerstein II, George and Ira Gershwin, George S. Kaufman and Maury Riskin. From that time until the 1980s a vast majority of successful musical theater composers, lyricists, and book writers were Jewish a notable exception is the Protestant Cole Porter, who acknowledged that the reason he was so successful on Broadway was that he wrote what he called, "...Jewish music." Rodgers and Hammerstein, Frank Lesser, Lerner and Lowe, Stephen Sondheim, Leonard Bernstein, Stephen Schwartz, Kander and Ebb and dozens of others during the "...golden age," of musical theater were Jewish. Since the Tony Award for Best Original Score was instituted in 1947, approximately 70% of nominated scores and 60% of winning scores were by Jewish composers. Of successful British and French musical writers both in the West End and Broadway, Claude Michel Schoenberg and Lionel Bart are Jewish, among others. One explanation of the affinity of Jewish composers and playwrights to the musical is that Traditional Jewish religious music was most often led by a single singer, a cantor while Christians emphasize choral singing. Many of these writers used the musical to explore issues relating to assimilation, the acceptance of the outsider in society, the racial situation in the United States, the overcoming of obstacles through perseverance, and other topics pertinent to Jewish Americans and Western Jews in general, often using subtle and disguised stories to get this point across. 
For example, Kern, Rogers, Hammerstein, the Gershwins, Harold Arlen and Yip Harburg wrote musicals and operas aiming to normalize societal toleration of minorities and urging racial harmony. These works included Show Boat, Porgy and Bess, Finian's Rainbow, South Pacific and The King and I. Towards the end of Golden Age, writers also began to openly and overtly tackle Jewish subjects and issues, such as Fiddler on the Roof and Rags. Bart's Blitz also tackles relations between Jews and Gentiles. Jason Robert Brown and Alfred Uri's Parade is a sensitive exploration of both antisemitism and historical American racism. The original concept that became West Side Story was set in the Lower East Side during Easter Passover celebrations. The rival gangs were to be Jewish and Italian Catholic. The ranks of prominent Jewish producers, directors, designers and performers include Boris Aronson, David Belasco, Joel Gray, The Minskoff Family, Zero Mostel, Joseph Papp, Mandy Patankin, The Nederlander Family, Harold Prince, Max Reinhardt, Jerome Robbins, The Schubert Family and Julie Taymor. Jewish playwrights have also contributed to non-musical drama and theater, both Broadway and regional. Edna Ferber, Moss Hart, Lillian Hellman, Arthur Miller and Neil Simon are only some of the prominent Jewish playwrights in American theatrical history. Approximately 34% of the plays and musicals that have won the Pulitzer Prize for Drama were written and composed by Jewish Americans. The Association for Jewish Theater is a contemporary organization that includes both American and international theaters that focus on theater with Jewish content. It has also expanded to include Jewish playwrights. Topic. Hebrew and Israeli theater The earliest known Hebrew language drama was written around 1550 by a Jewish-Italian writer from Mantua. A few works were written by rabbis and Kabbalists in 17th-century Amsterdam, where Jews were relatively free from persecution and had both flourishing religious and secular Jewish cultures. All of these early Hebrew plays were about biblical or mystical subjects, often in the form of Talmudic parables. During the post-emancipation period in 19th century Europe, many Jews translated great European plays such as those by Shakespeare, Molière and Schiller, giving the characters Jewish names and transplanting the plot and setting to within a Jewish context. Modern Hebrew theater and drama, however, began with the development of modern Hebrew in Europe. The first Hebrew theatrical professional performance was in Moscow in 1918 and was closely linked with the Jewish National Renaissance movement of the 20th century. The historical awareness and the sense of primacy which accompanied the Hebrew theater in its early years dictated the course of its artistic and aesthetic development." These traditions were soon transplanted to Israel. Playwrights such as Nathan Alterman, Chaim Naaman Bialik, Leah Goldberg, Ephraim Kishan, Hanich Levin, Aharon Megd, Moshe Shamir, Avraham Slonsky, Yehoshua Sobel and A.B. Yehoshua have written Hebrew language plays. Themes that are obviously common in these works are the Holocaust, the Arab-Israeli conflict, the meaning of Jewishness, and contemporary secular religious tensions within Jewish Israel. The most well-known Hebrew theater company in Israel's national theater is the Habima, meaning the stage, in Hebrew, which was formed in 1913 in Lithuania, and re-established in 1917 in Russia. Another prominent Israeli theater company is the Kamari Theater, which is Israel's first and leading repertory theater. <laughs> Cinema In the era when Yiddish theater was still a major force in the world of theater, over 100 films were made in Yiddish. Many are now lost. Prominent films included Shulamith 1931, the first Yiddish musical on film His Wife's Lover 1931, A Daughter of Her People 1932, the anti-Nazi film The Wandering Jew 1933, The Yiddish King Lear 1934, Shir Hashiram 1935, the biggest Yiddish film hit of all time Yidl Mitn Fidl 1936, Where Is My Child 1937, Green Fields 1937, Dibbuk 1937, The Singing Blacksmith 1938, Tevye 1939, Miral Efros 1939, Lang East Der Weg 1948, and God, Man and Devil 1950. The roster of Jewish entrepreneurs in the English language American film industry is legendary: Samuel Goldwyn, Louis B. Mayer, The Warner Brothers, David O. 
Selznick, Marcus Lowe, and Adolf Zukor, Fox to name just a few, and continuing into recent times with such industry giants as super agent Michael Ovitz, Michael Eisner, Lou Wasserman, Jeffrey Katzenberg, Steven Spielberg, and David Geffen. However, few of these brought a specifically Jewish sensibility either to the art of film or, with the sometime exception of Spielberg, to their choice of subject matter. The historian Eric Hobbs Baum described the situation as follows. It would be pointless to look for consciously Jewish elements in the songs of Irving Berlin or the Hollywood movies of the era of the great studios, all of which were run by immigrant Jews, their object, in which they succeeded, was precisely to make songs or films which found a specific expression for 100% Americanness. A more specifically Jewish sensibility can be seen in the films of the Marx Brothers, Mel Brooks, or Woody Allen. Other examples of specifically Jewish films from the Hollywood film industry are the Barbara Streisand vehicle Y E N T L, nineteen eighty three, or John Frankenheimer's The Fixer, nineteen sixty eight. Topic: Radio and Television. The first radio chains, the Radio Corporation of America and the Columbia Broadcasting System, were created by the Jewish-American David Sarnoff and William S. Paley, respectively. These Jewish innovators were also among the first producers of televisions, both black and white and color. Among the Jewish immigrant communities of America there was also a thriving Yiddish-language radio, with its golden age, from the 1930s to the 1950s. Although there is little specifically Jewish television in the United States national Jewish television, largely religious, broadcasts only three hours a week, Jews have been involved in American television from its earliest days. From Sid Caesar and Milton Berle to Joan Rivers, Gilda Radner, and Andy Kaufman to Billy Crystal to Jerry Seinfeld, Jewish stand-up comedians have been icons of American television. Other Jews that held a prominent role in early radio and television were Eddie Cantor, Al Jolson, Jack Benny, Walter Winchell and David Susskind. More figures are Larry King, Michael Savage and Howard Stern. In the analysis of Paul Johnson, "...the Broadway musical, radio and TV were all examples of a fundamental principle in Jewish diaspora history, Jews opening up a completely new field in business and culture, a tabula rasa on which to set their mark, before other interests had a chance to take possession, erect guild or professional fortifications and deny them entry." One of the first televised situation comedies, The Goldbergs was set in a specifically Jewish milieu in the Bronx. While the overt Jewish milieu of the Goldbergs was unusual for an American television series, there were a few other examples, such as Brooklyn Bridge (1991–1993) and Bridget Loves Bernie. Jews have also played an enormous role among the creators and writers of television comedies: Woody Allen, Mel Brooks, Selma Diamond, Larry Gelbart, Carl Reiner, and Neil Simon. All wrote for Sid Caesar. Rainer's son Rob Reiner worked with Norman Lear on All in the Family, which often engaged anti-Semitism and other issues of prejudice. Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld created the hit sitcom Seinfeld. Lorne Michaels, Al Franken, Rosie Shuster, and Alan Zweibel of Saturday Night Live breathed new life into the variety show in the. 1970s. More recently, American Jews have been instrumental to novelistic television series such as The Wire and The Sopranos. Variously acclaimed as one of the greatest television series of all time, The Wire was created by David Simon. Simon also served as executive producer, head writer, and show runner. Matthew Weiner produced the fifth and sixth seasons of The Sopranos and later created Mad Men. More remarkable contributors are David Benioff and D.B. Wise, creators of Game of Thrones TV series, Ron Levitt co-creator of Married, with Children, Damon Lindelof and J.J. Abrams, co-creators of Lost, David Crane and Marta Kaufman, creators of Friends, Tim Kring creator of Heroes, Sidney Newman co-creator of Doctor Who, Darren Starr, creator Sex and the City and Melrose Place, Aaron Spelling co-creator of Beverly Hills, 90210, Chuck Lorre, co-creator of The Big Bang Theory, Theory and Two and a Half Men, Gideon Raff, creator of Prisoners of War which Homeland is based on, Aaron Rubin and Sheldon Leonard co-creators of The Andy Griffith Show, Don Hewitt creator of 60 Minutes, Gary Shandling, co-creator of The Larry Sanders Show, Ed. Weinberger, co-creator of The Cosby Show, David Milch, creator of Deadwood, Stephen Levitan, co-creator of Modern Family, Dick Wolf, creator of Law & Order, David Shore, creator House, Max Muchnick and David Cohan creators of Will & Grace. 
There is also a significant role of Jews in acting by actors such as Sarah Jessica Parker, William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, Mila Kunis, Zac Efron, Hank Azaria, David Duchovny, Fred Savage, Zach Braff, Noah Weil, Adam Brody, Katie Segal, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Alison Hannigan, Michelle Trachtenberg, David Schwimmer, Lisa Kudrow and Mayim Bialik. Topic music Jewish musical contributions also tend to reflect the cultures of the countries in which Jews live, the most notable examples being classical and popular music in the United States and Europe. Some music, however, is unique to particular Jewish communities, such as Israeli music, Israeli folk music, klezmer, Sephardic and Ladino music, and Mizrahi music. Topic classical music Before emancipation, virtually all Jewish music in Europe was sacred music, with the exception of the performances of klezmorum during weddings and other occasions. The result was a lack of a Jewish presence in European classical music until the 19th century, with a very few exceptions, normally enabled by specific aristocratic protection, such as Salomon Rossi and Claude de Quinn the work of the former is considered the beginning of Jewish art music. After Jews were admitted to mainstream society in England gradually after their return in the 17th century, France, Austria-Hungary, the German Empire, and Russia in that order, the Jewish contribution to the European music scene steadily increased, but in the form of mainstream European music, not specifically Jewish music. Notable examples of Jewish Romantic composers by country are Charles Valentin Alkin, Paul Dukas and Fromental Halevi from France, Joseph Dessauer, Karl Goldmark and Gustav Mahler from Bohemia most Austrian Jews during this time were native not to what is today Austria but the outer provinces of the empire, Felix Mendelssohn and Giacomo Meyerbeer from Germany, and Anton and Nikolai Rubinstein from Russia. Singers included John Bram and Judy da Pasta. There were very many notable Jewish violin and pianist virtuosi, including Joseph Joachim, Ferdinand David, Karl Tessig, Henri Herz, Leopold Auer, Yasha Heifetz, and Ignaz Moscheles. During the 20th century the number of Jewish composers and notable instrumentalists increased, as did their geographical distribution. Sample Jewish 20th century composers include Arnold Schoenberg and Alexander von Zemlinsky from Austria, Hans Eisler and Kurt Weil from Germany, Victor Ullmann and Jaromir Weinberger from Bohemia and later the Czech Republic the former perished at the Auschwitz extermination camps, George Gershwin and Aaron Copland from the United States, Darius Milhod and Alexander Tansman from France, Alfred Schnitke and Lyra Auerbach from Russia, Lalo Schifrin and Mario Davidovsky from Argentina and Paul Ben Chaim and Shulamit Ran from Israel. There are some genres and forms of classical music that Jewish composers have been associated with, including notably during the Romantic period French Grand Opera. The most prolific composers of this genre included Giacomo Meyerbeer, Fromental Halevi, and the later Jacques Offenbach. Halevi's La Juve was based on Scribe's libretto, very loosely connected to the Jewish experience. While orchestral and operatic music works by Jewish composers would in general be considered secular, many Jewish as well as non-Jewish composers have incorporated Jewish themes and motives into their music. Sometimes this is done covertly, such as the klezmer band music that many critics and observers believe lies in the third movement of Mahler's Symphony No. 1, and this type of Jewish reference was most common during the 19th century when openly displaying one's Jewishness would most likely hamper a Jew's chances at assimilation. During the 20th century, however, many Jewish composers wrote music with direct Jewish references and themes, e.g. David Amram Symphony, Songs of the Soul, Leonard Bernstein, Kaddish Symphony, Chichester Psalms, Ernest Bloch, Shelomo, Arnold Schoenberg, Mario Castelnuovo Tedesco, Violin Concerto Number no. Two, Kurt Weil, The Eternal Road, and Hugo Weiskel, Psalm of the Instant Dove. In the late 20th century, prominent composers like Morton Feldman, Georg Leggetti or Alfred Schnittke gave significant contributions to the history of contemporary music. Topic. Popular music The great songwriters and lyricists of American traditional popular music and jazz standards were predominantly Jewish, including Harold Arlen, Jerome Kern, George Gershwin, Frank Lesser, Richard Rogers, Philip Glass and Irving Berlin. <laughs> Dance Deriving from biblical traditions, Jewish dance has long been used by Jews as a medium for the expression of joy and other communal emotions. Each Jewish diasporic community developed its own dance traditions for wedding celebrations and other distinguished events. 
For Ashkenazi Jews in Eastern Europe, for example, dances, whose names corresponded to the different forms of klezmer music that were played, were an obvious staple of the wedding ceremony of the shtetl. Jewish dances both were influenced by surrounding Gentile traditions and Jewish sources preserved over time. Nevertheless the Jews practiced a corporeal expressive language that was highly differentiated from that of the non-Jewish peoples of their neighborhood, mainly through motions of the hands and arms, with more intricate legwork by the younger men." In general, however, in most religiously traditional communities, members of the opposite sex dancing together or dancing at times other than at these events was frowned upon. Humor. Jewish humor is the long tradition of humor in Judaism dating back to the Torah and the Midrash, but generally refers to the more recent stream of verbal, frequently self-deprecating and often anecdotal humor originating in Europe. Jewish humor took root in the United States over the last hundred years, beginning with vaudeville, and continuing through radio, stand-up, film, and television. A significant number of American comedians have been or are Jewish. Visual arts and architecture Compared to music or theater, there is less of a specifically Jewish tradition in the visual arts. The most likely and accepted reason is that, as has been previously shown with Jewish music and literature, before emancipation Jewish culture was dominated by the religious tradition of Anakinism. As most rabbinical authorities believed that the Second Commandment prohibited much visual art that would qualify as graven images. Jewish artists were relatively rare until they lived in assimilated European communities beginning in the late 18th century. It should be noted however, that despite fears by early religious communities of art being used for idolatrous purposes, Jewish sacred art is recorded in the Tanakh and extends throughout Jewish antiquity and the Middle Ages. The tabernacle and the two temples in Jerusalem form the first known examples of Jewish art. During the first centuries of the Common Era, Jewish religious art also was created in regions surrounding the Mediterranean such as Syria and Greece, including frescoes on the walls of synagogues, of which the Dura Europas Synagogue was the only survivor, prior to its destruction by ISIL in 2017, as well as the Jewish catacombs in Rome. A Jewish tradition of illuminated manuscripts in at least late antiquity has left no survivors, but can be deduced from borrowings in early medieval Christian art. A number of luxury pieces of gold glass from the later Roman period have Jewish motifs. Several Hellenistic-style floor mosaics have also been excavated in synagogues from late antiquity in Israel and Palestine, especially of the signs of the zodiac, which was apparently acceptable in a low-status position on the floor. Some, such as that at Naran, show evidence of a reaction against images of living creatures around 600 CE. The decoration of sarcophagi and walls at the cave cemetery at Beit Shearim shows a mixture of Jewish and Hellenistic motifs. However, for a period of several centuries between about 700 and 1100 CE there are scarcely any survivals of identifiably Jewish art. Middle Age rabbinical and Kabbalistic literature also contained textual and graphic art, most famously illuminated Haggadahs such as the Sarajevo Haggadah, and other manuscripts like the Nuremberg Mazar. Some of these were illustrated by Jewish artists and some by Christians, equally some Jewish artists and craftsmen in various media worked on Christian commissions. Outside of Europe, Yemenite Jewish silversmiths developed a distinctive style of finely wrought silver that is admired for its artistry. Johnson again summarizes this sudden change from a limited participation by Jews in visual art as in many other arts to a large movement by them into this branch of European cultural life. Again, the arrival of the Jewish artist was a strange phenomenon. It is true that, over the centuries, there had been many animals though few humans depicted in Jewish art, lions on Torah curtains, owls on Judaic coins, animals on the Capernaum capitals, birds on the rim of the fountain basis in the 5th century Naro synagogue in Tunis, there were carved animals, too, on timber synagogues in Eastern Europe, indeed the Jewish wood carver was the prototype of the modern Jewish plastic artist. A book of Yiddish folk ornament, printed at Vitesk in 1920, was similar to Chagall's own bestiary. But the resistance of pious Jews to portraying the living human image was still strong at the beginning of the 20th century. There were few Jewish secular artists in Europe prior to the emancipation that spread throughout Europe with the Napoleonic conquests. 
There were exceptions, and Solomon Adler was a prominent portrait painter in 18th century Milan. The delay in participation in the visual arts parallels the lack of Jewish participation in European classical music until the 19th century, and which was progressively overcome with the rise of modernism in the 20th century. There were many Jewish artists in the 19th century, but Jewish artistic activity boomed during the end of World War I. The Jewish artistic renaissance has its roots in the 1901 Fifth Zionist Congress, which included an art exhibition featuring Jewish artists E.M. Lillian and Hermann Struck. The exhibition helped legitimize art as an expression of Jewish culture. According to Nadine Nizar, until 1905, Jews were always plunged into their books but from the first Russian Revolution, they became emancipated, committed themselves in politics and became artists. A real Jewish cultural rebirth. Individual Jews figured in the modern artistic movements of Europe, with the exception of those living in isolated Jewish communities, most Jews listed here as contributing to secular Jewish culture also participated in the cultures of the peoples they lived with and nations they lived in. In most cases, however, the work and lives of these people did not exist in two distinct cultural spheres but rather in one that incorporated elements of both. During the early 20th century Jews figured particularly prominently in the Montparnasse movement, and after World War II among the abstract expressionists, Alexander Bogan, Helen Frankenthaler, Adolf Gottlieb, Philip Guston, Al Held, Lee Krasner, Barnett Newman, Milton Resnick, Jack Twerkov, Mark Rothko, and Louis Schenker as well as among contemporary artists, modernists and postmodernists. Many Russian Jews were prominent in the art of scenic design, particularly the aforementioned Chagall and Aronson, as well as the revolutionary Leon Baxt, who like the other two also painted. One Mexican Jewish artist was Pedro Friedberg. Historians disagree as to whether Frida Kahlo's father was Jewish or Lutheran. Gustav Klimt was not Jewish, but nearly all of his patrons and several of his models were. Among major artists Chagall may be the most specifically Jewish in his themes. But as art fades into graphic design, Jewish names and themes become more prominent. Leonard Baskin, Al Hirschfeld, Ben Shahn, Art Spiegelman and Saul Steinberg. Jews have also played a very important role in medias other than painting. In photography some notable figures are André Curtés, Robert Frank, Helmut Newton, Gary Winogrand, Cindy Sherman, Steve Lehman, and Adi Nes. In installation art and street art some notable figures are Sigalit Landau, Didi, and Michal Rovner. Topic. Comics, cartoons, and animation Graphic art, as expressed in the art of comics, has been a key field for Jewish artists as well. In the golden and silver ages of American comic books, the Jewish role was overwhelming and large number of the medium's foremost creators have been Jewish. Max Gaines was a pioneering figure in the creation of the modern comic book when in 1935 he published the first one called Famous Funnies. In 1939, he founded, with Jack Leibowitz and Harry Donenfeld, All American Publications the, Double -A group. the publication is known for the creation of several superheroes such as the original Adam, Flash, Green Lantern, Hawkman, and Wonder Woman. Donenfeld and Leibowitz were also the owners of National Allied Publications which distributed detective comics and action comics. That company was also a precursor of DC Comics. In 1939, the pulp magazine publisher Martin Goodman formed Timely Publications, a company to be known, since the 1960s, as Marvel Comics. At Marvel, artists such as Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, Larry Lieber and Joe Simon created a large variety of characters and cultural icons including Spider-Man, Hulk, Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Daredevil, and the team's Fantastic Four, Avengers, X-Men including many of its characters and S.H.I.E.L.D. Stan Lee attributed the Jewish role in comics to the Jewish culture. At DC Comics Jewish role was significant as well, the character of Superman, which was created by the Jewish artists Joe Shuster and Jerry Siegel, is partly based on the biblical figure of Samson. It was also suggested the Superman is partly influenced by Moses, and other Jewish elements. More at DC Comics are Bob Kane, Bill Finger and Martin Nodal, creators of Green Lantern, Batman and many related characters as Robin, the Joker, Riddler, Scarecrow and Catwoman, Gil Kane, co-creator of Atom and Iron Fist. 
Many of those involved in the later ages of comics are also Jewish, such as Julius Schwartz, Joe Kubert, Jeanette Kahn, Len Wein, Peter David, Neil Gaiman, Chris Claremont and Brian Michael Bendis. There is also a large amount of Jewish characters among comics superheroes such as Magneto, Quicksilver, Kitty Pride, The Thing, Sasquatch, Sabra, Ragman, Legion, and Moon Knight, of whom were and are influenced by events in Jewish history and elements of Jewish life. In 1944, Max Gaines founded EC Comics. The company is known for specializing in horror fiction, crime fiction, satire, military fiction and science fiction from the 1940s through the mid-1950s, notably the Tales from the Crypt series, The Haunt of Fear, The Vault of Horror, Crime Suspense Stories and Shock Suspense Stories. Jewish artists that are associated with the publisher include Al Feldstein, Dave Berg, and Jack Kamen. Will Eisner was an American cartoonist and was known as one of the earliest cartoonists to work in the American comic book industry. He is the creator of the Spirit Comics series and the graphic novel A Contract with God. The Eisner Award was named in his honor, and is given to recognize achievements each year in the comics medium. In 1952, William Gaines and Harvey Kurtzman founded MAD, an American humor magazine. It was widely imitated and influential, affecting satirical media as well as the cultural landscape of the 20th century, with editor Al Feldstein increasing readership to more than 2 million during its 1970s circulation peak. Other known cartoonists are Lee Fock creator of The Phantom and Mandrake the Magician, the Hebrew comics of Michael Netzer creator of Uri On and Uri Fink creator of Z-Bang, William Steig, creator of Shrek, Daniel Klaus, creator of Eight Ball, Art Spiegelman creator of graphic novel Mouse and Raw with Françoise Mouly. In animation, Jewish animators' role is expressed by many. Jendi Tartakovsky is the creator of several animation TV series such as Dexter's Laboratory and Samurai Jack, Matt Stone co creator of South Park, David Hilberman, who helped animate Bambi and Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Frizz Freling, Looney Tunes, Ralph Bakshi, Fritz the Cat, Mighty Mouse, The New Adventures, Wizards, The Lord of the Rings, Heavy Traffic, Coonskin, Hey Good Lookin', Fire and Ice, and Cool World, Alex Hirsch, creator of Gravity. Falls, Dave Fleischer and Lou Fleischer, founders of Fleischer Studios, Max Fleischer, animation of Betty Boop, Popeye and Superman. Several companies producing animation were founded by Jews, such as DreamWorks, which its products include Shrek, Madagascar, Kung Fu Panda and the Prince of Egypt, Warner Brothers, which its animation division is known for cartoons such as Looney Tunes, Tiny Toon Adventures, Animaniacs, Pinky and the Brain and Freakazoid. Topic. Cuisine Jewish cooking combines the food of many cultures in which Jews have settled, including Middle Eastern, Mediterranean, Spanish, German and Eastern European styles of cooking, all influenced by the need for food to be kosher. Thus, Jewish foods like bagels, hummus, stuffed cabbage, and blintzes all come from various other cultures. The amalgam of these foods, plus uniquely Jewish contributions like zimis, cholent, gefilte fish and matzah balls, make up Jewish cuisine. See also Ashkenazi Jewish intelligence Culture of Israel Humanistic Judaism Jewish studies Yiddishkeit References Topic. Further reading Landa, M. J. The Jew in Drama. New York, KTAV Publishing House 1969. Stevens, Matthew. Jewish Film Directory, a guide to more than 1,200 films of Jewish interest from 32 countries over 85 years. Trowbridge, Flix Books, 1992 ISBN 0-9489117-2-7298-P. Wiedelinger, Jeffrey. Jewish Public Culture in the Late Russian Empire. Bloomington, Indiana University Press, 2009. External links The City Congregation for Humanistic Judaism Congress of Secular Jewish Organizations Global Directory of Jewish Museums News and Reviews about Jewish Literature and Books Festival of Jewish Theater and Ideas 
The Bezalel Narcus Index of Jewish Art Heb, an online magazine about Jewish culture. <laughs>